Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAT Cranes and Components. Today we're going to focus on the P-hoist and finish our series doing the last video on the wire rope guide removal and replacement. We're going to show the use of the special tool and the use of how it compresses the rope guide band to remove it and then how to also compress the inner liner on the smaller size hoist. On a P-wire rope hoist, the rope guide is found here where the rope lead-off is. It surrounds the wire rope. The rope guide is a steel band that goes around the drum and holds cast iron wedge-shaped pieces against the drum to track in the grooves and lets the rope come out through an opening and a surround on all the sides and guides it into the groove. Smaller hoist models have a plastic liner that puts pressure on the rope that rides underneath the cast iron wedges in a slot. We've removed the spring here already that holds the plastic band together and you will see this in the video on a different hoist that gives us a much better vantage point. To begin the procedure, you will want to make sure that you have clearance on both sides of the rope guide and not be at the far extreme end of travel. So we've positioned at this location and I recommend highly the first step be to take a photo with a cell phone of the assembly to make sure you have all your fasteners in the right place for when you go to reassemble. So we're looking close up at the inner liner spring. There's multiple hooks in this direction and one hook in this direction. The spring is in the middle between two metal clips. One has a square shape, the one that we're going to manipulate, and you have to select which hook you're going to hook into based on your model size of hoist. To remove the spring from the plastic liner, we'll use the special tool, and in this case we'll use the side of the tool that has the groove and the cup. The groove tip goes on the bottom of the spring above the square shape connector and then at the bottom of the teeth that the spring mates with we'll hook in the cup and then we'll compress by tightening. This takes the spring pressure off of the retainer and you can see it moves free and clear of its hook. Now it can be removed by simply removing the pressure on the tool. Now that you understand how to remove the spring from the plastic liner, we're going to take off the cover over the throat opening where the rope is. Remember we took a photo of this on our cell phone so that we understand which fasteners are in which position. Now that our throat cover guide is removed, we'll focus our attention on removing the rings. We'll position first and get a little slack in the system. And we'll remove our plastic liner first. Next we'll focus on getting out the steel band with the iron wedges. Some people prefer to pull it from the top down and others from the bottom forward. It depends on the reeving of the hoist, what access you have, if there's a crosshead in the way or other parts of rigging in the way, and which way to do it. Now that we have it removed, you can see that the inside 
of the cast iron wedge shapes have accommodation for two of the grooves in the drum of the empty grooves next to the wire rope. So whenever you're reassembling, remember that your two grooves over are filled in by the inner part of these wedges. So it's always good to track this by which groove you're putting it into. The first groove closest is made to have the plastic liner go in. And you can see the slot for the plastic liner. The wedge shaped pieces are riveted on the outer part of the band that holds it together and just be careful of the pinch points where the wedges come together. For reassembly it's good to keep some pressure on the rope lead off and pull it just slightly to the left side. For reassembly I'll add just a dab of grease on the leading edge of my inner diameter of the rope guide. We'll insert around the bottom taking into account plastic rope guide, if it's necessary, you can take on the leading edge and chamfer the corners to help it go through the slot and make it around the drum. Use simple nippers to put a small chamfer on the leading corner. Now that we have the inner plastic liner put back in its track under the rope guide, and the rope guide ring is all the way around the drum, and we have the opening where it's supposed to be with the rope lead off, I'll go back to use my special tool to draw the two metal ends together and then put the face plate back on. For reinstallation, I'll go back and put in my special tool and I'll compress my plastic ring, having the spring in the retaining connector hooked at the top. I'll check a book to see which slot I should hook into here, and then simply remove my pressure and let it fall into that position. So let's recap the tips that you should keep in mind. First, take a picture so you remember your fasteners and their locations and keep track of which bolts and which screws go in which holes. Second, plan to use the special tool to do the work. It makes the compressions of the rings a lot easier for both the inner liner and the rope guide ring itself. Reinstalling the rope guide ring, remember to add a dab of grease. And on the white plastic liner, you're allowed to chamfer the very leading edge of the corner to help it go through the slot. This concludes our series of videos on the venerable P-hoist. The P-hoist 
started its life in design in 1961. It was modified in 1967 and has served all the way till 1986 before it was replaced by other models. But in the real world, they service on and we service them.